Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Backing a global trend that has seen a number of pharmaceutical firms withdrawing their manufacturing capabilities from emerging countries, Sanofi has committed to maintaining its production facilities in these markets, citing a recent 3 million euro investment to expand the manufacturing capacity for TB and HIV AIDS medicines at its Twane based site. Natalie Gree visited the revamped facility to find out more. An offshoot of the world's fourth largest pharmaceutical group, Sanofi South Africa's expansion project has enabled the local plant to increase its production capacity of life-saving drugs to 350 million tablets and capsules, or 10 million TB packs a year, servicing around 1 million South African patients. The expansion came as the company was awarded 95% of a government tender to provide TB medication to public healthcare institutions, making it the largest government supplier of these drugs, as Sanofi South Africa GM John Fagan explains. From a healthcare point of view, Sanofi are very aware of the particular disease burden challenges we have in South Africa, and of course foremost in your mind is TB and HIV. So in the area of TB, we supply approximately 90% of all TB products uh, to, to the South African government for the TB program. And also very importantly, it's all manufactured on South African soil in this facility. Uh, government are asking us to supply them about 10 million boxes of, uh, of TB products. And the TB products will vary from products for patients who are currently got active TB. Uh, we also supply products for patients who have got multiple drug resistant TB. That's a real killer. Uh, and then we even have a product called INH, which kind of uses prophylaxis in the area of TB treatment. The company has also boosted its AIDS treatment strategy by signing a partnership agreement with global research-based pharmaceutical group Hetero for the development of an antiretroviral, or ARV, product portfolio in 2012. The local facility now manufactured 12 million ARV drug packs a year. Fagan said the agreement enabled it to deliver quality ARV products at affordable prices and to increase the manufacturing benefit of these medications in South Africa as they were locally produced. In the area of ARVs, we, we contribute about 20% of the, of the ARV uh, tender. So a major player in the supply of quality products uh, in HIV and TB to the South African government. Elaborating on the group's strategy to retain a presence in emerging markets, he added that sales into these regions represented almost a third of the global group sales, bringing in revenue of some 11.1 billion euros a year. So you can't ignore where most of the people in, in the world live today is in, is in emerging markets. And you've got to acknowledge the fact that the disease burden differs from, from area to area. And in the emerging markets like Latin America, or well, let's take Africa where we live, uh, Africa typically, from a healthcare point of view, will be looking for quality vaccines, quality products for malaria, quality products for TB, and quality products for HIV. And Sanofi on the continent of Africa have got portfolios in all those areas. And we've got seven manufacturing plants which can manufacture these products for African patients on the continent of, of Africa. Other news making headlines this week. MTN eyes 3G in Iran while the South African operations fall flat. And a new solar PV installation will supply up to 45% of West Alpine VAE's electricity needs. Telecommunications giant MTN aimed to roll out third generation or 3G technologies across Iran, despite the millions of dollars the mobile operator was unable to unlock from its largest Middle East market. In Iran, a 3G license was issued uh, just two, three days ago, um, and just over 2,000 sites um, are ready for, for, for 3G launch. So we, we anticipate that we will be able to, to, to get off the starting blocks with the delivery of the 3G service in Iran very, very quickly. A 353 kilowatt solar photovoltaic plant at Turnout Systems Company Wust Alpine VAE South Africa's Isando premises will supply between 40 and 45 percent of the company's daily electricity requirements. We are part of a the international group based in Austria. There's a big drive from the group point of view to try, first thing, to try to be very conscious about green energy across the board. So, and then all, all our sister companies all over the world, they're trying to come up with concepts of trying to install some kind of alternative energy, not pure electricity from the coal. Other companies, they go into, you know, where there's enough water systems. Maybe some plants are sitting next to rivers, they would install a hydro system. 
So we thought like maybe where in Africa, where, what, what option could we look into, what's available? So the concept of, uh, of having the PV system came into being like, you know what, that could be something that you can do while the initiative is to try to save electricity. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.